Hey, welcome to Crafty Music Tips. In this video, we're going to go through a step-by-step -step list of things that you need to go through if you're going to be putting together a video. Now, being that this is a music tips channel, it would make sense that there would be some music related stuff. And there is. There's four earlier parts to this series where we tell you everything about getting your audio ready. So I'll leave the links below for them if you want to check them out. We're going to talk about making a video. So what is video? Why is it important? Well, I always think that it's good to have a video to accompany audio if it's going to visually enhance it. Or if you're from South Australia like me, you say enhance. <laughs> Potato, patata, tomato, tomato, all let's call the whole thing off. So that's the first thing you've got to ask yourself is, do I need video? And if you do need video to go with your audio, well then why? I don't know. The process of putting together a video can actually be really quite a challenge at times. So being really clear of the why is going to help you get through it. Now, if you've watched the last few videos of this series, you'll know that the recording process is pre-production, production, and post-production. So it's exactly the same with video. Now, like many things in life, it's real easy to spend way more time than is necessary on a particular task. And so making a video is no exception. It's so easy to just spend so much time. Now, so it's really important in this pre-production stage that you plan, plan for when your deadline is, plan for what story or message or emotion that you want to portray in the visuals and what equipment or logistics need organizing for both on the screen and off the screen. All right, and once you've planned all that, you could go even further into planning a list of shots that you could be taking, like a storyboard type of thing. Yeah, so I can't stress enough how important planning is because if you have a clear idea of exactly all of the things that are going to take place in your putting together your video, well, it's just going to be so much easier to follow those steps. Okay, so then it's the production stage, which is shooting the video, getting your camera out, whether it's a phone or a fancy camera, and hitting record. I'm ready for my close-up, Mr. DeVille. There's a little bit more to it, though. It's pretty important that you test. Give yourself a quick test. Make sure that the lighting looks right. If you don't have a very good lighting setup, well... Just using natural light can be totally fine, as long as whatever you're shooting is clear. If it's not, it can be such a pain trying to be able to enforce lighting in the post-production stage, which we'll talk about a bit later. And while you are set up recording, don't be afraid to do multiple takes or get some shots from multiple angles, because look, you can set up and do another shoot at a later date, but you may as well just do it while you're there, as long as you've got a little bit of time up your sleeve. All right, once all of the recording is done, then it's the post-production stage. Now, post-production is a bunch of things. You have to import your files into some video editing software. You have to organize them. You have to color grade. You chuck in transitions, effects text then you've got to evaluate like once you've got a video you watch it from start to end and you're like does it actually really show the original intention that i had does it show the vibe then once you're super happy you just export out the file if you're a bit like um i don't really understand some of those things what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you an example of a video i recently put together let's quickly check it out don't know like, I don't care if you're naughty or nice Or if you hear the same words twice I hope that you have a very legendary Christmas Alright, so obviously that was a video that I put together so that I could help enhance the audio, which was a song wishing people a Merry Christmas. Now, so I had to ask myself, did I actually need a video to go through that? I didn't need one necessarily because I could have just sent the audio out. But I thought, you know what? I want to put together a video because if people were going to see me wishing them a Merry Christmas, it would just, I guess, be the 
next step up apart from just hearing it. All right, so in my pre-production stage, I did have a bit of a plan. My plan was mainly just knowing that like with my deadline, the deadline was Christmas, right? So I knew exactly when I needed to be uploading the video to YouTube. And then I kind of planned backwards. I needed to know when I needed the recording done by so I would have some time to film. Now, one of the things that I did when I was planning what type of visuals I wanted is that, you know, I would shut my eyes and I would just listen to the recording and I would think, you know, what is the best way to visually represent what you're hearing? And so the conclusion that I came up to well, is that it needs to be kind of light and fluffy and fun. And I thought, well, what better way to be able to recreate that is just having me in front of a green screen because then I can chuck anything that I want behind it. And as you can see on the screen here, I had a plan of the equipment that I needed to use to film, as also I needed the equipment that I would need in front of the camera as well, like my props and stuff like that. Now the last bit of my planning was making sure that I knew what I was going to be doing in front of the camera for each section of the song. A really important thing to me is making sure that what I'm doing in front of the camera really coincides with what the audio is doing. So if it's a quiet bit in a song, I'm not going to be jumping around. I'll just be kind of standing still. All right, so then in my production stage, it was time for me to hit record. C97, take one, mark. Action. But before I was ready to really unleash, I did a couple of tests first. Just really quick, 10 seconds or whatever, standing in front of the camera, making sure that the lighting looked good and making sure that the framing was good. Now, with my lighting, I'll show you an example for right now. See, I'm sitting in front of two lights. I've got one there and one sort of up there. Now, I'll show you if I turn this one off, then all of a sudden I'm really like dark on this side. And then, interestingly enough, Turn that one back on. Without this one, you can see it's like yuck over this side. And this light over here, actually, I adjusted to be quite a bit higher than I usually would because otherwise it was hitting my face too much. So yeah, being a bit finicky on just making sure your lights are in a good position is not going to be time wasted. Now, once I did hit record, I did do multiple takes because, hey, I'm a human being. I didn't get it all perfect straight away and I was figuring stuff out as I was going. All right, so when I was happy that I had enough usable footage, I figured, well, all right, I'm done. So off went the camera and out went the files into my computer and I imported them into Final Cut Pro. Here are the individual files here. <laughs> that ukulele was not in tune, I forgot about that. But does it matter? Nah, you're not going to be hearing it because whatever is in the audio is all that you can hear. So once I imported everything in, then Final Cut Pro has got this great automatic sync function. So it just syncs up everything to the same part of the song, which uh, is the, this is the audio file right here. So it just syncs to it. It's amazing. All right, so once all the different bits of footage were organized and synced up, what I had to play with in this edit window was something that looked like this. So in Final Cut Pro, you've got an edit window. And in this edit window, the files that are on top of each other, they go in front of the whatever's behind it. And so with a green screen, you can have many kind of layers. And so anyway, so, uh, so let's just have a quick look here. So at the very start, Basically, that's just me there, but just with a, an effect. And then there I am playing the guitar, and I've just zoomed in. I've done a fake zoom in, because because uh, what I wanted is I wanted to then, when I start singing, then you can see my face. Can you believe that it's nearly the end of the calendar? Now, the reason why there's less vision here and more here is because I had a an idea that it would be a good visual climax at the end of the song to have many versions of me, so... Happy New Year. Yeah, as you can see, there's a, a lot of me going around, so that's that one, that's that one there, that's that one, that's that one. Oh, there's that uke. There's guitar. 
this one. Oh, bass playing. That's Santa with some guy. Who could that be hiding behind there? Oh, there's another guitar. Yeah, so once I had all of these bits of footage all laid out and kind of organized, well, then it was a matter of doing some color grading. Now, I decided, because I was in a rush, I thought I'll skip the color grading because I managed to get the lighting pretty good at the recording. So I thought, well, you know what? It looks pretty good. If I get more time later, then I'll go back to color grading. But what, basically what color grading is, is making sure that all of the brightness and the contrast and the exposure and the colors are all visually appealing to the eye. Now, transitions are kind of like swiping one side or fading in, fading out. What other transitions do we have? You know, so here's an example of a transition that I used. Knowing that you could have gone to Jamaica. So as you can see, there's a couple of different transitions here. So the image of me fades away, but then the the background Jamaica fades in and then I fade in. So they're all separate transitions. Knowing that you could have gone to Jamaica. So once I went through the whole video and put in the transitions that I wanted, then it was a matter of what effects do I want? So here's one of the effects that I put on. It was at the very start. Sometimes it's not a good idea to put too much in too soon. You want to be able to build an effects amount. But I thought that it was important that you don't see me straight away. So as I said, that there, there's a, an effect on just me there. And then you can see... Oh, it's a person, but you can't see my face yet until I start singing. So once I had all my effects sorted out, it was a matter of asking myself, do I want to have text in the video? And if so, where? So this was a huge undertaking in typing in all of the text and getting the animated text to be able to fit in with when the words were appearing in the audio. Can you believe that it's nearly the end of the calendar? So how I chucked text into this video was that I just chose a text effect that I liked. And then here we go. So let's just see what it would look like if we chuck this in here. What should we say? See what that looks like. Yeah, so it zooms in and zooms out. All right, so once all of my text was inserted into the video, then it was a matter of evaluating. Does, you know, if I watch it all, does it give off the vibe that I wanted to be portraying? And so I wasn't sure. So I showed it to a couple of people and then they gave me a little bit of feedback and then I made a couple of little tweaks and then I was ready to export. All right, so how I exported this video is I just went up to the top right button here gives you a bunch of different options. I was going to be putting it up on YouTube, so I just choose YouTube. And then from there, you can you can muck around with the settings a little bit if you like, but uh, yeah, just click next and then you're good to go. And cut, print, we're moving on. All right, so that's how I put together my video. Now, let's just do a quick recap. What are the takeaways for you? So you gotta ask yourself, do you actually really need a video? And if you do, why? It's really important to know that first going in. And then you've got your three main stages, the pre-production, production, production post-production, and it's really important to remember, don't skimp on any of the above, especially the planning. Every time we say goodbye, I die a little. Yay! We've actually got through these five parts. This was the video one. We started with songwriting or just choosing a cover song and then it was arranging and then it was recording the audio and then it was the post-production of the audio before you're ready to shoot a video. So was going through all of these videos helpful for you? If you could let me know in the comments below, what was the most helpful for you? What have you learned? That would be awesome for me. If I could be even more helpful for you, what I will offer you is a free gift. It's called Actually, How Good Are You? It's an ebook, a free download, which I'll leave a link for below, which basically it just shows you all of the steps to take to be able to figure out well, where are you at on your musical journey right now and where is it that you want to end up. And the beauty is it doesn't matter what age you are or what experience that you have or feel like that you don't have. So yeah, give it a download from the link below. My name's Crafty. This is Crafty Music Tips. I hope it's been helpful for you. Let me know 
what would you like me to go through in another video going forward? So I'll see you in whatever that video is really soon. Take care of yourself. Keep rocking.